Convicted criminal Oliver North, who sold illegal weapons to Iran, you know, he was a key figure in the Iran-Contra scandal, um, he's now working with the NRA. And he went on Fox News to respond to the most recent mass school shooting that we had. We seem to have one, like, once a month. This one happened in Santa Fe, where ten people were killed. Um, let's see what he had to say about this and what policy prescriptions he proposes. And I felt like eventually it was going to happen here, too. What do you say to young people like that who have come to expect shootings in their schools? They shouldn't have to. They shouldn't be afraid to go to school. They shouldn't uh, worry about the fact that they might not go home that night because some crazed person comes in with a firearm, which is one of the reasons why the NRA for over two years has been advocating a program called School Shield. And there's finally legislation for it. I think there's 75 to $100 million appropriated by the federal government to assist in it. Look, if School Shield had been in place in Santa Fe High School, far less likely that that would have happened. The, the problem that we've got is, is we're, we're trying like the Dickens to treat the symptom without treating the disease. And, and the disease in this case isn't the Second Amendment. The disease is youngsters who are steeped in a, in a, a culture of violence. Uh, they've been drugged in many cases. Nearly all of these perpetrators are male and, and they're young teenagers in most cases. And they've come through a culture where violence is commonplace. All we need to do is turn on a TV, go to a movie. If you look at what has happened to the young people, many of these young boys have been on Ritalin since they were in kindergarten. Now, I am certainly not a doctor, I'm a Marine, but I can see those kinds of things happening and endangering those two gals. So, and so their let's siblings. get specific because this was the 16th, yeah. 16th school shooting so far this year. That is the most at this point of the year since they started keeping records after Columbine in 1999. Two, three key specific things that you think would keep our children safe. Well, what well, School Shield would, because School Shield. Which is what? It's it's a program. The NRA introduced it two years ago. It's a we'll go do an assessment. Cost the school nothing. Cost the taxpayers nothing to get the assessment as to what the issues are in terms of ingress, egress, the ability to hide a firearm and get it into a school. The number of school resource officers you really need. Uh, and very few schools actually have that. Yeah, but let, let's just talk about that specific. Let me, sure. if I may, just yeah. talk about that specifically. This school had two policemen armed roaming the halls. The school administrator said yesterday they considered Santa Fe a hardened school. But you, you, there was no way to detect a firearm being brought into the building. Look, at, you and I came through the lobby here in this in this building where we're sitting right now. There was a security desk there. There was a barrier for us to pass through. You can't get on an airplane today without going through a metal detector. I, I but I was going to say, there's no metal detector in our building. Are you suggesting that there be a metal detector? And I'm not saying that's wrong. A metal detector at the entrance to every school for millions and millions of schools? Yeah. Well, students? If you want to stop the carnage, look, the, you're not going to fix it by taking away the rights of law-abiding citizens. You've got to fix it in a way that hardens the place sufficiently that those kids are safe inside the door. If that means five metal detectors getting in and out of the high school, you get five metal detectors. Okay. Cameron Kasky, one of the park... All right. So first, let's talk about um, the multiple dodges. This is obfuscation and deflection. This is what he's doing here when he says... You know, the disease here is violent movies, violent TV shows, you know, he implies violent video games. We live in a culture of violence. So I have a bunch of questions for him over that. The, the first one is, do you include, you know, for example, the worship of our military as part of a violent culture? How, you know, at every baseball game, for example, it's a showing of patriotic support. Every sporting event, period, it's a showing of... Uh, patriotic support, um, you know, we, we're in countless wars all the time, we're bombing eight countries right now, do you consider that rampant militarism as a part of our culture of violence? My guess is he'd draw a clean line around that and say, no, 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 that's good, it's good that we're bombing eight countries, it's, the militarism is good, what I mean is, uh, you know, the violent uh, movies and video games and TV shows, that's the problem. Well, here's the problem with that, pal. 
There is no evidence to suggest that there's a link between violent movies and TV shows and video games and mass shootings. In fact, all of the evidence points in the other direction. There are many countries that have the same violent movies and video games and TV shows, and they don't have a, a mass shooting epidemic like we do. So, you know, Japan is the perfect example. They have next to no mass shootings. Um, they have very tight gun regulations. But they have the same uh, video games we have, same violent video games we have. So many countries have the same violent video games and movies, and it turns out people are not dunces. They can differentiate between watching The Walking Dead and wanting to go shoot their neighbor Dave. So, I mean, what a fucking pedantic, condescending, shitty dodge that is. Like, oh, I'm gonna stand up here and fucking yelp about people's freedom, but at the same time, I'm gonna imply that maybe we should restrict the freedom to watch a violent video game, to watch a violent movie or TV show or play a violent video game. What happened with your concern about freedom? I care about freedom. Unless it allows me to deflect from guns, which is all I really care about, in which case I'll imply that maybe there should be a crackdown on those things, the entertainment angle of it. Because this guy's obviously not playing fucking violent video games, so he wants to come for your violent video games while, you know, maintaining a system and, and a policy when it comes to guns where we don't even have a universal background check. So fuck you, Oliver North. And by the way, you're working for a group that lies every time there's a mass shooting. Remember the, the mass shooting? It was in Vegas, where the guy wiped out, I don't even know how many, fucking probably over 40 people, uh, taking them out from a hotel as they're enjoying a concert. And uh, he was using a bump stock. And so the NRA came out after that shooting and lied and said, Oh, yes. Bump stocks, you know, hey, maybe these should be regulated. Let's ask the ATF to determine uh, if there can be more regulation in the current context. Well, come to find out, their mealy mouth statement was nothing but a dodge because the ATF isn't responsible for regulating bump stocks anyway. So that's like saying, hey, maybe the DMV should regulate Wall Street. Let's check under current existing laws for them to crack down. Well, that's ridiculous because they're not responsible for regulating Wall Street. So that's a way for them to appear like they're in favor of common sense gun regulation when they're not. When they're not. They're liars. That's what they are. Uh, so, fuck you dodging when you say, video games and movies. Fuck off. There's no link between that and violence. Where is there a link? There is a link between the more guns you have, the more violence you have. Okay. Now, then he goes on to Ritalin. Let me explain the multiple ways. Now, I don't know if he was saying Ritalin and really that's a stand-in for, oh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, pills that have a psychological impact that are being prescribed. So, in other words, I don't know if he meant literally Ritalin or if he's just kind of saying that as a stand-in for all pills, whether it's Ritalin, Xanax, or really in most cases, whenever people bring up pills in, in this context, they talk about SSRIs, antidepressants. Now, let me explain why this is preposterous. Aside from the um, point that there's there's no evidence for it. Let's say, hypothetically, it is true that many of them uh, who do this mass shooting are prescribed these pills. Well, does that mean that when they did the shooting, they took the pills? Or does that mean that when they did the shooting, they didn't take their necessary psychological medication... And that's why they did the shooting. You understand the problem we have here? So is the problem that, hey, they were prescribed the pill and they took the pill and that's what made them do the shooting? Or is the problem that they were prescribed the pill and they should have taken the pill, but they didn't take the pill? And the fact that they didn't take the pill made them do the shooting. Like they should have been on their meds. They were off their meds and that's what led to the shooting. So that's not... Like, that's a really, really, really kind of layman's armchair pontificating response to this kind of stuff. It's like, ah, I don't know, the pills or something. No, if we're going to have a conversation about this stuff, stick to the data, stick to the facts, stick to the studies. And of course, there was a Harvard meta-analysis done on this of all the studies. And they said, um, where there are more guns, there is more gun violence. Now... That doesn't mean that, you know, the, oh, we should ban guns and that's the end of the conversation. No, but it does mean that we should be having, a, you know, a debate about 
which exact gun regulation should we do that would make our system make more sense? And yes, you can balance the idea of protecting law-abiding citizens' freedom to have a gun, but also balance it with the idea of public safety. And what kind of gun should be allowed, and what kind of magazines should be allowed, and what kind of background check system should we have, and how comprehensive should it be, and who should we ban from getting guns within that background check system. But we're not even having that reasonable discussion, because idiots like this come out there and deflect and obfuscate and then, you know, make up shit. Like, I don't know, Ritalin or something. Pills? Violent video games and movies. And then, listen, when when we get to the police state, uh, to the, um, the solution, really what he's referring to is a police state. He's saying, um, we should basically have, you know, uh, metal detectors absolutely everywhere, and we should have, like, security out the wazoo everywhere we go. But as Chris Wallace pointed out, in this particular shooting, this school had two armed guards, and it didn't stop the shooting. Now, that doesn't mean armed guards are definitely the wrong way to go. It just means that if you point to that as a fix, in an instance where we had that in place, I, that doesn't seem like it makes all that much sense. Now, I'm not against the issue of uh, the, the idea of some armed guards, but I don't think that's a cure-all. By the same token, I don't think um, gun regulation is a cure-all. I just think that in the aggregate, it would tick down the uh, statistics. It would tick down the instances of gun violence, whether we cut it 20% or 50% or whatever it may be. I think that all helps. I would be willing in a compromise bill to take the right-wing idea of having an armed guard or something and mix that with actual uh, common-sense gun reform, like universal background checks and a ban on high-capacity magazines and things of that nature. But I do want to point out, there is one, and this will be the final point, massive um, piece of hypocrisy in what he's saying here, that he doesn't, he doesn't recognize at all. Now, these are the types of people who say, listen, more guns equals more peace. And their philosophy is, hey, the good guys... There are more good guys than bad guys, so if you arm everybody, the good guys with the guns will outnumber the bad guys with the guns, and that's why we need to arm as many people as possible. That's what a guy like Oliver North would say, that's the NRA's position, but if you notice there, he says, oh, my solution is basically, whatever, metal detectors at schools and more uh, guards, but my question for Oliver North is, if guns keep us safe, which is what his position is, then why would you want a metal detector to stop people with guns from coming in? If guns keep us safe, then wouldn't a metal detector that's used to keep out guns be the problem and the opposite of what would keep us safe? Because again, you say more guns equals more peace. So why would you want a metal detector to stop people with guns from coming into the school. So, and that that's the main point, guys, is their logic implodes on itself. Because ultimately, they have to concede on some level, yes, the idea is to keep the guns out of the hands of the people who shouldn't have the guns. So, since we all really admit to that, even though sometimes they don't say it that they admit to that, Step number one needs to be a rigid, universal background check with strict standards as to who's allowed to have a gun and who's not allowed to have a gun. And again, that won't stop all mass shootings, but it'll certainly tick them down, for sure. Because the idea is you disincentivize the people who shouldn't have a gun from getting a gun. Some of them will be able to go on the black market and get a gun anyway, for sure. But many of them won't, probably the overwhelming majority of them won't, because who the fuck casually has connections to the black market like that? So, their logic implodes on itself, too. And that's just something to keep in mind. If more guns equals more peace, then why would you want a metal detector to keep out the guns? Wouldn't you want more guns in the school? Because ultimately, they have to concede the logic of what we're talking about, which is you have to keep the guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have the guns. And if you believe in that, which everybody on some level believes in that, then the answer is gun reform. Now, your idea of gun reform might not go as far as my idea of gun reform. And then there's somebody else's idea of gun reform that would probably go further than my idea of gun reform. But let's at least be intellectually honest and talk about how 
That's the conversation we need to be having. Not this bullshit obfuscation and deflection and, oh my god, it's the Ritalin, it's the pills, it's the fucking violent video games and movies. It's none of those things. What it is, is the weapons.